Matthew chapter 13, the parables of Jesus. Later that day, Jesus left the house and sat by the lake shore to teach the people. So there were so many people surrounding him that they had to teach sitting in the boat, while the large crowd stood on the shore. He told them many things by using stories, parables, and illustrated spiritual truths, saying, Consider this. There was a farmer who went out to sow seeds. As he cast his seeds, some fell along the beaten path, the birds came and ate them. Others fell onto gravel, that is no topsoil. They quickly shut up, shut up, but when the days grew hot, they were scorched and withered because they had no insufficient roots. Others fell among the thorns, so when this brought it, the thorns choked them. But other seeds fell on good, rich soil that it kept producing a good harvest. Some yielded thirty, some sixty, and some even one hundred times as much as he planted. If you are able to understand this, then you need to respond. Then his disciple approached Jesus and asked, Why do you always speak to people in this hard understanding parables? He explained, You have been given the intimate experience of insight into the hidden mysteries of the, king, the, realm, of God, the realm of heaven's kingdom, but they have not. For everyone who listens with an open heart will receive progressively more revelation until he has more than enough. But those who don't listen with an open, teachable heart, even the understanding that they think they have will be taken from them. That's why I teach the people using parables, because they think they are looking for truth. And because their hearts are unteachable, they never discovered it. All of those that will listen to me, they never fully perceive the message I speak. The prophecy of Isaiah describes them perfectly. All of those who listen carefully to everything I speak, they don't understand the thing I say. They look and pretend to see, but the eye, the hearts are closed. Their minds are dull and slow to perceive. The ears are plucked and are hard of hearing. They have deliberately shut their eyes to the truth. Otherwise, they would open their eyes to see and open their ears to hear and open their hearts to understand. Then they would turn to me and I would instantly heal them. But blissful are your eyes, for they see. Delighted are your ears, for they are open to hear all the things. Many prophets and godly people Yearn to see these days of miracles that you being favored to say. They would have given everything to hear the revelation you being favored to hear. Now you are ready to hear the explanation, the peril of the sower. What was a psalm along the path represents the one who listened to the message of the kingdom, but does not understand it. The adversaries and comes to snatch away what was sown into his heart. The one sown on gravel represents the person who gladly hears the kingdom message, but his experience remains shallow. Shortly after he hears it, troubles and persecutions come because of the kingdom message he had received, then he quickly falls away. For the truth did not sink deeply into his heart. The one sown among thorns represents who receives the message, but all for life with busy distractions, his divided heart, and his ambition for wealth result in sophisticating the kingdom message, and it becomes fruitless. But what was sown on good, rich soil represents the one who hears and fully embraces the message of the kingdom, their lives bear good fruit. Some yield a harvest of 30, 60, even 100 times as much as was the sown. The parable of the weeds. Then Jesus told them 
another parable. Heaven's kingdom can be compared to a farmer, who planted a good seed in his field, but when everyone was asleep, an enemy came, and planted weeds among the wheat, and ran away. When the wheat sprouted and the born grain, the weeds also appeared. So the farmer's hired hands came to him and they said, "Sir, wasn't that good seed that you sow in the field? Where did all these weeds come from?" He answered, "It has to be the work of the enemy." He replied, "Do you want us to go and get up all the weeds?" "No," he said. If you pull out the weeds, you might uproot the wheat at the same time. Let them both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell my harvesters to gather the weeds first, and tie them all in bundles to be burned. Then they will harvest the wheat and put it into my barn. The parable of the tiny mustard seed. Then Jesus told them another parable. Heaven's kingdom can be compared to. The tiny mustard seed that a man takes and plants in his field, although the smallest of all the seeds, it eventually grows into the greatest of garden plants, becoming a tree for birds to come and build their nests in the branches. The parable of the yeast. Then he told them another parable. Heaven's kingdom can be compared to yeast that. A woman takes and blends into three measures of flour, and then waits until all the dough rises. Prophecy and parables. Whenever Jesus addressed the crowds, he always spoke in allegories. He never spoke without using parables. He did this to fulfill the prophecy. I will speak to you in allegories. I will reveal secrets that has been concealed. Since before the foundation of the world, Jesus explained the parables. Jesus left the crowds and went inside the house where he was staying. Then his disciples approached him and asked, "Please explain the deeper meaning of the parable of the weeds growing in the field of wheat." He answered, "The man who saw his field was good seed, is a son of man, and the field." In the world, the good seeds are sown, are the children of the kingdom realm. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sow them is the devil. The harvest points to the end of this age, and the harvesters are God's messengers. And the weeds are bound up and thrown into the fire, so it will be at the close of the age. The Son of Man will send his messengers. And they will uproot everything out of the kingdom. All the lawless ones and everything that causes sin will be removed, and they will throw them into the fiery, fiery furnace, where they will experience great sorrow and anguish. Then the righteous will shine like the brightness of the sun in their father's kingdom realm. If you are able to understand this, then you know better respond. Parables for hidden treasure, and extraordinary pearl. Heaven's kingdom realm can be illustrated by this: a person discovered that there was a hidden treasure in a field. Upon finding it, he hid it again, because of uncovering such a treasure, he was overjoyed and sold all that he possessed to buy the entire field, just as just so he could have the treasure. Heaven's kingdom realm is also like a jewel merchant in search of rare pearls. When he discovered one very precious,、uh, when he discovered one very precious, a requisite pearl, he immediately gave up all he had in exchange for it. The parable of the fishing net. Again, heaven's kingdom realm is like a fisherman who catches a large net into the lake. Catching a assortment of fish, when the net was filled, the fishermen hung it up on the shore, and they all sat down to sort it out their catch. They collected the good in baskets and threw the bad away. As it will be 
at the close of the age. The messengers will come to separate the evil from among the godly and to throw them into the fiery furnace, where they will experience great sorrow and anguish. Now, do you understand all this? Yes, he replied. He responded, Every scholar of the scriptures who is instructed in the ways of heaven's kingdom realm is like a wealthy homeowner with his halls filled with the treasure both new and old. Right after Jesus told this series of parables, he left from there. Jesus rejected it in his hometown. When Jesus arrived in his hometown of Nazareth, he began, teach, he began teaching the people in the synagogue. Everyone was dazzled, overwhelmed with astonishment over the depths of the revelation they were hearing. They said to one another, Where did this man get such a great wisdom and a miraculous powers? Isn't he the, the craftsman's son? Isn't he the mother named Mary, the four brothers Jacob, Joseph, Simon, and Judah? And don't his sister all live here in Nazareth? But where then did he get all this revelation and the power? And the people became offended and began to turn against him. He said, There's only one place a prophet isn't honored, his own hometown. And their unbelief kept him from doing many mighty miracles in Nazareth.